We might be drunk, we might be drunk As long as we are hanging out, you know we might be drunk Raise a glass, let's talk shit Head peeps, Rex, and a bit Maybe drunk, we might be drunk Yeah Ah, here we are folks, we're back I know last week was a sad and somber one But we're here, I got a Hawaiian shirt on Sam's wearing sweatpants, the beer <laughs> Jew is cooking We're rolling I like, I like the outfit Thank you, thank you, I'm wearing sweatpants too I uh, I feel like it's still hot out. I'm, I'm like, when's this summer gonna end? So I throw on a Hawaiian. I like the the Hawaiian is. I don't think I've ever seen you in one. I wore one here. Did you? This exact shirt. Yeah, yeah. All right. But well, I, I gotta pay attention. <laughs> they breathe. They breathe. Yeah. It's weird when people say, it. "What can breathe? The shirt, a wine." Yeah, things, wines things that can breathe. Alive. Yeah, that's true. I almost made a horrible racial joke, but uh, let me think. <laughs> What's the guy's name from Staten Island? Uh, I can't breathe. What's that? Uh, what else can breathe? Sheets can breathe. You yeah. know? Yeah. Oh, these this comforter really breathes. Yeah. Wine can breathe. Yeah. I mm. can't breathe when my mom nags me. <laughs> That's what I tell her. Yeah. Norm can't breathe. That was uh, my segue. Ooh. Sorry. Norm, you know, you knew, this is how good the comic Norm was, is that like no comics made jokes about his death. That's true. I saw one and That's it was good. pretty great. What was it? It was, uh, man, who would have thought Artie Lang would outlive Norm MacDonald? Yeah. And I was geez. like, that's fucking great. That we was, all thought that. Yeah. That was Artie Manis. Funny guy. Damn. That is, well, you know what's crazy is Artie's like, I listen to Artie's tribute to Norm, you know, he did a little special, and it's like the first time I've heard his voice, and Artie sounded great, so you're like, fuck, I hope Artie gets better. Yeah, yeah, he's still lucid and funny and all that, I just, he, he looks like hell, but he's still with it, which, you, thank God. Do you think about Norm, it's crazy that Norm would just go on these late night shows unwell, like you rewatch some of this stuff, and it's like Chadwick Boseman, where you're like, oh, we had no idea that... He was just showing up to do all this work, feeling like, dude, I can't imagine that. I know. You get a crick neck. You're like, I'm canceling the wedding. <laughs> oh, I thought about that. Like, if I had cancer and I was on the road, I, my oh. opener would be like, you better laugh. I have uh, cancer. <laughs> that would right. be my opener. Right. Yeah. He was stoic. He totally hit it. He didn't want the the glory. Ah, fuck it. You know, I'm, I got cancer, but I was, I've listened to like. 900 hours of norm stuff just to mourn and yeah. me- commemorate 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 is that something <laughs> sure yeah yeah he always said commemorative coins <laughs> on uh, like fox news these weird old people gifts to get the plates the, <laughs> america the plates weird. Yeah. yeah like can you imagine being happy like dad we got you that george washington coin you and i on <laughs> yeah. you're like you mean a quarter yeah give me a whore you got me a quarter <laughs> yeah what are we doing here yeah you got me a quarter <laughs> the commemorative coins speaking of coin who, who's that cum guzzler out there on the beach every saturday with the metal detector that, that guy's still around yeah i was just in florida i saw that guy so weird. I know. Get a job, you you hobo. But do they ever find good shit? Never. You better off going to a pawn shop or something. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy. Weird, it's a weird hobby, right? It's there. It's a weird, sad hobby. But it's like it's like a scratch off ticket. You never know. Oh Holy God. shit! The beer Jew comes through with a short sleeve shirt. Why aren't you in uniform? What, so this is a mojito. Yep. What is the garnish here? Is that basil? Mint. 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 Yeah. Basil. Jeez. <laughs> I'm a real idiot. Uh, <laughs> what is that? Carbonara uh, in the drink? Uh, yeah. What is that? Marijuana? <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's a beautiful looking mojito. Mojito. I'm not a big mojito guy. They're a little sweet for me, but I, you make, you're so good at making drinks. I bet I'll like it. Yes. Yeah, I, t- I took the sweetness off for this one. You Did make you? a man's, man's cocktail. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like the end, kind of like the last days of summer. We want to commemorate them. And, uh, here, here. Yeah. That's why I got the shirt on too. I love yeah, it. You I look love good. it. I like it. By the way, I don't know. Has anyone ever thought about this? The two only two groups that like super sweet drinks, women and black people. They're the only two. Everyone else hates them. Some men like them. You see, you see dudes with Mountain Dew and 
I don't know. I mean, look, I'm in a lot of comedy clubs, and I got the black table over here, and I'm like, that's a lot of blue drinks on a tray. <laughs> blue drink with fruit and umbrellas and all that. I'm they're like, you're the toughest that, uh, guy in here. They're keeping that electric lemonade going. That's uh, <laughs> Yes, yes, exactly. Dude, I will tell you, I remember Mike Yard, who's a really funny comic. Funny comic. And, uh, and a great dude. Tough guy, too. Oh, like, yeah. I believe East New York. And been some shot. Jamaica in there. Yeah, like tough dude. And I remember one night, he ordered a Bailey's Irish cream on the rocks <laughs> and i was like "Ooh!" like i kind of gave him some shit for it and he goes i could still kick your ass <laughs> i was like yeah yeah but you afterwards can. you'll be celebrating with the bailey's irish cream so <laughs> but yes you could still kick my ass mike without yeah. question that is a silly argument it's like hey dude you're wearing a women's underwear well i could beat your ass but yeah you're still wearing women's underwear that's <laughs> that's the point but all right yeah you're just ribbing your friends yeah, right, yeah let's, all right, try. let's try this here here yeah. mazel Ooh. Good clink. Nice glass. These are thick glasses. Oh my god, that's wow. incredible. Dude, you have got a gift. <laughs> this is fucking magical. <laughs> Tell them how to make it there, bear. So basically it's just uh technically it's one point five five ounce um white rum. We're using Bacardi today, Ooh. but we also have uh Mount Gay Eclipse, which is also very nice. Mount um, Gay! You want to go for, like, uh, a silver room? You, don't want, to, you don't want to be at the bottom of that mountain. <laughs> <laughs> that mountain's broke back. <laughs> and then it's just some uh, lime juice, some simple syrup, and uh, shake it up. Muddle the mint in there, shake it up, and uh, top with soda water. Wow. Mojito. I've mint. had a lot of mojitos in my day, and that one is the tops. Best by a mile. I, I'm Power not a big, you, you a mojito guy? Not really, no. You, I, you knew we were drinking today, and I didn't, and you were, you were pretty excited for this one. Well, I knew if the beer Jew was cooking it up, it would be something special. And this is special needs. <laughs> That's why I'm going to drink it drink slow. <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't drive. Um, but yeah, yeah. Wow, that is great, man. Uh, you make it just right. Because you're right. A lot of, there's a lot of people lean on that that sweet, that what is that, that squeezy thing you put in there. The syrup? The syrup. Simple syrup, yeah. Yes, yeah. syrup. That's basically you're covering up like bad ingredients, but you know, uh -huh. I, I I've heard they do that at like stuff. bad sushi restaurants. I hear like do, say if you're at a bad place, don't order the spicy tuna because they're covering up old tuna oh. with the spicy. Oh, yeah. that's what I say when I haven't showered. I'm like, it's a little spicy. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Sorry there, Mrs. Spicy crabs. <laughs> yeah, that's a salmon skin. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I hate is the epidemic with the t uh, with the sushi now, and this wasn't around back when I was banging. Is the uh, the gooey, saucy aioli shit on top? They have to put that mayo. Spicy mayo. I think they went too far. I feel like we're fat Americans, so they're like, gotta give them more sauce. Gotta give them more like. Give me the goods. We'll just get the, you're getting the special uh, the special rolls. Just get the regular rolls. Oh, uh, maybe that's my because I like a special roll. Yeah, I like a special roll. All right, they're good. But you're right. If they if they go a little, t it's, if it's too wet, you're like, what are we doing? Yes, here? yes. Sushi's like the opposite of a woman. If it's too wet, we got a problem. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'd rather wet than dry. <laughs> my girlfriend was so wet the other day, I had to put her in rice. <laughs> All right, that's my that's my updated Rodney. Uh, man, yeah, you know what? I go back on that premise i was trying to spin something quickly if you're too wet it's pretty good pretty good oh, i said yeah. opposite of a woman there you go that's why i said opposite. there you I'm go sorry. you got it yeah somebody did a there's so much norm stuff out there that somebody did a norm to rodney late nights oh wow and you could see you know, idolized idolize rodney and you can see the influence like rodney would come out banging on the couch and then they cut the norm banging on the couch and you're like whoa i see it it's, it's really weird, cool though yeah this is a weird criticism of norm and i mean this as a compliment he was so much better on the couch than when he just did pure stand-up on the show. Yeah. Because Norm was doing such a high level of comedy that he needed a guy to set him up. Interesting. I think. I mean, he was doing this. No, Conan called it like a high wire act. You yes. Know? And that's kind of what it felt like. You need a guy to be like, what are you doing? Like Conan right. knew how to be the straight man. Right. Like the, what Carson and Dangerfield had, Conan and Norm had. Wow, that's a great call. Even more so, I'd say, because... Yeah. Carson really just had to be like, just set up Rodney. Yeah. Nor Conan had to kind of be like, what are you talking? Like he had to like yeah. really, he got had to make it like a buddy comedy. Exactly. He obviously loved Norm and wanted Norm to keep going, but you have to be like, you're crazy. What yeah. are you nuts? You know, but it's all part of the show. That's what people don't get. This is all entertainment. Like people go, what's wrong with Norm? He's doing the thing. He's he's being funny. Well, there was the one where he's he, in you character. Ever, you ever see the two? 
uh, 2006 interview, John Stewart mm. and Norm, where, where Norm Great. Norm is making a joke about the crocodile hunter who has just died. And he's yeah. like, that guy must have had a hard time getting life insurance. He goes, yeah, I'm a, I'm a crocodile hunter. <laughs> you know? ah. And he goes, he made the 44, the, the ripe old age of 44 as a yeah. crocodile hunter. And like, and then he gets killed by a little fruity fish. That's what he says. <laughs> like, they must have been furious. Like, who killed him, Frank? They're like, nah, it's a little fish. Man, he was so good at comedy. Like, you know when they say you know all the you have to know the rules to break them? Yeah. He had that down because he had a weekend update joke where johnny cochran you know in the oj trial put on a knit cap and it was like showing that it it couldn't fit oj because it was too big on his head and he goes or as oj refers to it my lucky stabbing hat <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just so it's like funny concentrated like the, the orange juice the frozen yes. stuff there's no adding to it there's no water mixed in it's just man that's funny you're so right like he would he would just it's almost like he would just say the thing. Like yes, it almost wasn't yes. a joke. Like how we sometimes forget. Sometimes you see a joke simplified, and you're like, "Oh, that's the joke." Right. But when when there's fat on it, you're like, "Ah, he cut out all the fat." All it the was fat. Just, it it was. You're right. It's funny. Concentrate. Yeah, you know yeah. He had it. Uh, concentration camp. <laughs> I mean, he's just uh, on another level. And we could do an hour. I just want to th- say three things. Yeah. Check out Norm on his Dennis Miller uh, appearances. Dennis are unbelievable. Spayed, yeah. Yeah, that one's great. Uh, and it's how, he's talking about how Spade loves cock and all that. It's great. And then he's he's great on Adam Carolla's show where they break down Kenny Rogers songs. Yeah. Kenny Rogers has some dark songs and they break them down. Oh, and I had another one. Oh, and Conan does a tribute to him and it's fucking touching. How he's like, get Norm here. We need Norm. And they're like, he doesn't want to come in. And he didn't realize he's just dying of cancer. But they're like, why won't Norm come in? What the fuck? And that's what you learn. Like, everybody's going through something. He's yeah. like, does Norm not like me? Is something going on? You know, so Norm, yeah. he said Norm was the number one request when Conan started a podcast. Like, by a mile. Like, why haven't you had Norm on? And I wonder if it would leave. have been as good, though. Because you, I, the crowd really yeah. knows what made Norm so good is that he just didn't, he knew how to, like, he worked them in a way where it was like, almost like a boxer, like, oh, yeah. it, it, it was I yeah, know. he was he was probably the best panel guest ever. Probably, because yeah. Because it was so damn unpredictable. Yeah, like Rodney was great joke, great joke, but Norm was like, I don't know what he's going to say. I don't know where he's going to go. Yeah, it was Rodney. I mean, I'm not taking it. Rodney is a fucking genius. Oh, I mean, yeah. Rodney, the greatest. One of the uh, greatest. But, you know, damn. Yeah, we got somber again here. Ah, huh? All right, we, we got a no, lot to talk tough. about. It's tough. It's, lot it's to talk about. tough loss. Well, one more for Norm. Yes, here, here, my hero. Mm-mm-mm. I really do see your influence. Oh, man, it's huge. Huge. And, like, Conan had another great point, and I'll leave it alone. He goes, Norm got fired for making jokes about a murderer. And then he went on the ESPYs, and he made jokes about these athletes who were kind of pieces of shit. And he got scolded for it. And he's like, everybody's like in comedy. He's like, I'm a hero. I'm against racism. I'm against homophobia. He's like, we all agree with that. This guy got in trouble and actually was a hero. Like he was actually pushing against and got in trouble for it. That's a hero. Well, the SBs, it wasn't. I mean, he was making fun of OJ again, right? He's making yeah. fun of like he was making fun of uh, Jerry Jones. He was he would attack. He, he he had a bullshit meter, and he would attack yes. people that he thought were getting away with something. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, but then he got in trouble. He got fired for, for like one of the great comedy jobs. Can you imagine getting fired now from SNL for making fun of a murderer? Exactly. Like, oh, uh, hey, what's the equivalent? Uh, like Robert Durst is going to t- trial. You know, They're like you can't make, you can't make fun of Robert Durst. Yeah, yeah, he's friends with the the head guy. Like, who which gives could, a which you're like, well, that could be again. But yeah, can that's you imagine? true. That's true. Now, how spineless. I mean, they were spineless in, like, another direction then. Now they're spineless in, like, they're, they're always living in fear, but yes. usually it's a fear that protects them, not it's like, don't don't fuck with me. Right, you know? right. Great point. So true. The, the fear is still there. It's just changed directions. Yeah. Interesting. All right. All right. Sorry. We, we, we can go down a normal rabbit hole every week for the rest of this. You got that right. Uh, but, yeah. I'm showing it to the lady who who's bored by everything, and she's like howling. It's so fun to watch. Yeah, he's a beast. Beast. But you're you're kind of right. The panel is really where he he shined, shown, shined, shined, shined. Yeah. Well, he uh, 
I had watched another one that was like Nick Swartzen, Sandler. Oh, Spade, I Rob saw that Schneider. one too. Closeted oh Gay God. Man. Oh my, so many good. Oh, that Closeted Gay thing was. What a brilliant he, twist on that. Yeah, he's, it was great. Mm-mm-mm. Damn. It's also cool. You can, Bill Burr's got a tribute. Conan's got a tribute. Saget, like all these people, Artie Lang, they all well, just Saget went Saget directed deep. him in Dirty Work. That's right. That's right. I always forget that Saget directed that one. Mm-hmm. So funny, the guy, the America's dad, the squeaky cleaniest guy of all time, is the filthiest guy on the planet. You know how tall he is? Six four. Six you five. got it. Six four. That's I opened a tall for him motherfucker. once in Vancouver years years ago. Saga, very nice guy. Yeah, very I've, nice I've heard guy. he's a sweet sweet guy, but his act is literally like jizz in my ass, <laughs> fuck a kid. It was, it was like yeah. actually, I didn't open for him. It was like a. Uh, a theater gala type thing. So he hosted uh, it. So I went on after him actually and it was all, oh man, look oh, at that. Geez, sorry. <laughs> we started taking about talking about Saget, all the holy things in here fell apart. <laughs> uh, all the wholesome pictures. We got we gotta get rid of that one anyway. What the hell is that? Is <laughs> I don't that know what shit? that is either. Yeah. Tell these fans to start sending in some some knickknacks so we can uh patty wag. Yeah, we got so Give yeah. a dog a bone. Remember Gotham Studios, if you want to send us a booze, if you want to send us, you know, st- stuff for the studio. Uh, yeah, please. Please, send it over. I mean, yeah, it's like a fucking uh, Red Red Robin in here. You know, we got, we're going to have a trumpet <laughs> and a bowling pin. the saddest fast food spot, <laughs> Red mean, Robin. Peter, she did a great job with the studio. I'm just saying. Uh, it looks like Rochester in here, where you're from. <laughs> we got to get out of Rochester. All right, let's get back to Mount Gay. Uh, where yeah. were you this weekend? I was in Philly. Hey! I was in Millersville, and then Philly had a... Uh, had our but my buddy Shafi hosting the mm-hmm. Millersville Gary Veter featuring, and then it was it was a two person show, me and our boy two morose Jews for the price of one brother. We Hell had a yeah. great time. It was it was great. Yeah, you got little Jew, big Jew. Yeah, it was fun, man. We had a great time. That's great. How I about mean, you? Where were you? One of my favorite clubs. I love Philly as a city. You ever walk around that Written House? Beautiful, beautiful. There's like pretty girls and the fountain, and the it's so lush and all these cool restaurants around there. It's Great history. Good Karen times. and I are walking through the park, and there's a guy playing uh, music. He's playing Elton John on the guitar, and we just walk by. and And as we walk by, he goes, "Sam, how were the shows this weekend?" Whoa, <laughs> yeah. that's awesome. That was pretty cool. That's great. The artist stopped to talk to the artist. It was nice. Yeah, and then you're like, "I'm not tipping you." <laughs> 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 but no one has cash anymore. That's become a hard gig. Good point. Do they, I guess they some of them put a Venmo there. That's true. But who's going to open their phone? That's a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I had the guy. Uh, you ever have the guy outside of Chase Bank doing the door open? You're like, all they give you is twenties. I know. What do you want me to do here, the Dickless? I got no. I can write <laughs> I you a check. Dickless too. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a bad system. <laughs> it is a bad system. I mean, you might as well be that ice cream guy with the. You know, like you got to make you got to make change here, buddy. Well, that's a tough thing if you're if you're homeless now. Like we're going way digital. Digital, right? yeah. You know, so. Uh, that, if That's I was a tough. stripper, my name would be a uh, Cash App. <laughs> you know, just put a Come tattoo. Come to the stage, <laughs> Venmo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, PayPal, everybody. That's oh yeah, you put man, in, this is put a in good the friend drink, zone. dude. So good, once again. And you look fresh. You look uh, non hungover for the first time in yeah, your you life. Yeah, you got the hair slicked back. Look at that. Yeah, not bad, right? I got a haircut just because uh, I've been working seven days a week, so I got to do something to look not ridiculous yeah women told a women a woman told me that if a guy has a little bit of shine in his hair they go nuts yeah yeah i think it means that they're together exactly and it goes back to that old school draper thing you know like you gotta you gotta you're a man it's funny women want like the draper type but they don't want the draper type all right well they want don draper but they don't want what comes with don draper right right yeah that's true it's kind of like craving you know a cheesecake it's like but you don't want that after effect yeah i think that's how life is i mean look you want to bang carmen electra but you don't want to you don't want to have uh but you don't want to be sandwiched with her no <laughs> yeah that's true although you don't want to be now I would love to be Dennis Rodman. I think in the '90s I want to be Dennis Rodman. I you, think now it, it, <sighs> you put on a wedding dress for a photo shoot. I don't think so. <laughs> but that was Rod. Rodman was like, he was like fucking with people. He was that's, great. That's how great Rodman is. He's not even trans, and he's like, I'm gonna dress with as a woman for the attention. It'll yeah. be it'll be a thing. But that just raises the question. Obviously, younger people and people in the know and the media have to push boundaries. I'm trans now or, or I'm uh, whatever. It's got to go the other way because if you go so far this way, 
eventually someone's going to go, I have no tattoos. And we're going to go, damn. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. got to go like somebody's going to show up in a business suit and a job and no piercings and be religious. And we're going to go, this guy's a fucking rock star. Yeah, you're right. Eventually, there's going to be like a census thing where someone's like he, she or they. And they're like she. And they're like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. You whoa. Know? A okay. little edgy. Yeah. Interesting. She's going as a woman. Yeah. <laughs> Good for it, you. It's, it's got a, it's all cyclical. Yeah, for sure. You're right. It is one of those things. I used to have a bit about this, but it was like how. If you're a guy and you and you like get your eyebrows done, your friends are like you're a pussy. Yeah. But if you become a woman, they're like you're a hero. Uh, <laughs> like how it's like it's you got to go all out. You can't you can't give like true. a little bit. Yeah, because right? like if you get a haircut, right? Sometimes like like we're not assholes, but if you get a haircut and you go to the comedy cellar, someone's like, "Ooh, yep. someone got a haircut." Yep, yep. They just start tearing you to shreds. That's so true. Or, or the worst one, they go, "I see you got a haircut," and they don't say if it's good or bad. <laughs> they just are like, I, "You got a haircut." Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I never got. Uh, oh no, somebody has a great bit, but I can't think of who has the bit, and I feel bad because I want to give him credit. But some guy had a great bit. He's like, I got, I got broken up with, and then you walk around New York, all you see is men and women making out everywhere, and you're like, Ah, oh, geez, what the fuck? Get a room, God damn it, get out of here! And then I saw a gay couple making out, and I'm like, ah, Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how it is. Like with certain groups, you got to be more supportive. Yeah, it's New a York funny couples, take. There's so many new couples in New York because it's a city that you just see so much PDA. I know. Also, I that know. it's also like a vacation spot destination for people. So that's also like we're on vacation. We're happy. True. True. But you also see the unraveling. You also you see the see unraveling. So much. Yeah, you see both. Yeah, nothing. I mean, I've seen so many girls crying on the subway platform, just like trying to hide it. And you're like, that was after you talked to them. <laughs> yeah, I did my act. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's true. You, I think because we're just out out of our apartments. Our apartments are yeah. the size of a uh, beer juice dick, so you got to get out. It's so small, and then <laughs> you know. Uh, I'd say if his dick is uh, 500 square feet, he's doing all right. Uh, that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, but no kitchen. <laughs> his dick's got a kitchenette. <laughs> <laughs> kitchenette. Kitchen's at the back. Uh, yeah. Cool. You take off your pants. Wow, your dick's got a walk-in closet. That's pretty cool. <laughs> now get back in it. Um, yeah, yeah. Philly, though. At least no flight. What, did you drive there? We drove, it was, yeah, That's it was nice. one of those hotels where you're like, anytime there's a wedding in the hotel, you're like, I, I think I could do a little bit better than this hotel next time. Oh, yeah. The wet, it's like, I hate when, I hate being that guy, but I'm like, dude, they're screaming on my floor at three in the morning. I'm like, can, I, can someone, they're like, it will send up security. Wow, you know? you're the guy now. You're the shut these people down well, guy. I think. Care and alert. Come on, what you know, happened? You just let him fucking go wild. Yeah, and you're put on a podcast. Let the kid, let the kids be young and and fun. Yeah, by the way, they were my age. They weren't kids. Ah, they're at the okay. wedding. They're they're drunk. Vito was furious too. I'm happy. I'm with old Jew man energy. Where he was, <laughs> he was like, this is unacceptable. I'm like, it is unacceptable. Ah, you know? Picture Vito in a carton with a pipe and a, and a little leather bound book, like. Oh, he was furious. He's also, an, he's a dad, so he just gets up at 8.30. Oh, by, right. He just gets up at 8.30 because he gets up at 8.30. Sure, sure. And then he's texting me at like noon. He's like, breakfast, I'm starving, please. <laughs> like, you can eat without Yeah, me. right, right. But Wait. he wants that, you want that road lunch you together. You want the hang. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, were you at, I mean, it's already over, so were you at the Sinesta? I was. Yeah, that's where I was too. Not great. It's a little, a little cheesy down there. It's a little nightclub-y. Yeah, it's not great. Not great. I'll tell you, you know what I don't care for? Here's a peeve. Ruth Ruth Chris's Steakhouse. What a stupid... See how hard it was for me to just say right now? Get a real fucking name for your steakhouse. Well, I got a little... I got to push back because it's from New Orleans. Okay, well, it's now, a stupid name still. It is a stupid name, but here's the, here's the rub. <laughs> Dry rub. But Ruth was this crazy old coos who worked under the thumb of her husband. He opened a steakhouse... He should have like five kids. He walks out on the family. Yeah. Back in the day when you could do that and there was no Facebook trail. And he walks out on the family. So this poor lady is in the back cooking up steaks alone with her with her children, like trying to keep the restaurant alive because they got no other income. They're freaking out. So she grows it into this giant, huge, like five star steakhouse. All the big big wigs are eating there and everything. And then she makes a chain, another chain. It's this insane story of like a you know, independent woman who got screwed over, who makes it big, and it was called Chris's Steakhouse, and she's like, "It's Ruth's Chris, motherfucker." I got and a, I got a story. better idea. Ruth, 
I know. I agree. Ruth, Ruth Steakhouse. I know, but she's got a bone to pick with uh, with Chris. Yeah. I I get it. And then he came back like, "Can I get some royalties?" And she's like, "Blow me, you come stay, and this is mine now. You left me in the kids. So now the kids hate him." I could All be right. butchering this whole story, but if I made a movie. You know, we got to have a female lead and a female superhero and uh, all that shit. That would be my movie. That's a badass story. Critical that's story. That's true. Yeah. Damn. Back there with a, one hot plate making steaks for like ten guys, and the, the little boys are, you know, they're trying to they're in little tuxedos trying to keep the place alive. Damn. Crazy down in New Orleans. Amazing. Voodoo queen. Yeah. Look that up there, uh, Matt. Look, the steaks could be are off. good. I just hate the name. And- hate the name. And it's attached to the hotel, which doesn't help. Doesn't help. And there was just like a, a party like every night. We were just like, come on. <laughs> now, did you get did you get sloppy at all? There were, I mean, look, we did three shows on Saturday. So, oh, God. So it's like I've gotten good at doing starting with coffee on that first yep, show. Yep. Then transitioning into vodka, you're yep. like you need you need to figure that out. So, there uh, is an art to that three show because I did three that night too, and you you maybe have a beer on the first one, and the second one you're like, eh, give me a vodka soda, and then by the third one you're like, shot, shot, tequila, let's do it. And I then did it's one. Over. I did one shot on stage. Nice, uh, the green tea shot, which is whiskey and peach schnapps. Pretty solid shot. Not bad. Not bad. I don't know where you stand on that there, sloppy jalopy. Uh, it's it's. As, as far as the taste, it's pretty good. And it's surprising that it actually does taste like green tea. It does. Um, I'm a chamomile man. But, uh, <laughs> I, actually, I like to get fucked up. Like That's like Staten Island's favorite shot. Really? And, uh, oh, really? Yeah, like all I used right. to work at a, like a, a wedding hall there, and that was like all we made. As long as it's not Fireball. Fireball had a moment in the sun, Fireball's and I'm glad a, it's fizzled. <laughs> Fireball's the devil. I don't like it. The cinnamon, devil! It's cinnamon has no place in alcohol. Agreed. I'm just not, like, I like cinnamon. I'll, sure. Like, cinnamon, I, I think it has its purpose. I like Big Red, man. I'll yes! Fuck with, I'll fuck with cinnamon. Love Dentine Big Red. Dentine Fire. I'm all in. Cinnamon Get that Toast shit. Crunch. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is good. Best cereal. I mean, you're That's eating. That's your number one? I mean, it, you're, you're eating cubes of sugar, but it, it's you can't beat it. Give me, give me your top five sugar cereals right now. I like Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I like Pops. Damn, what? Pops. Just pops. those yellow corn Jesus pops are Christ. underrated. I like Jesus Lucky Christ. Charms. What weird ones. All right. And I Lucky like, Charms. Oh, That's yeah. That's an overrated one, too. I'm eating fruit. I'm eating marshmallows I know, for breakfast. But then, just, stop, just give me all marshmallows. What's with the... What, what well, are you tricking me with that, the... That's how life works. You got to have a little struggle with your you're reward. Turning, you're turning this into a philosophical <laughs> conversation. That, right? <laughs> yeah. You got to have a little uh, little rain, then some sunshine. That's, you can't just go all sunshine. I now want a blizzard, in... baby. Yeah. A marshmallow <laughs> blizzard. Uh, all right. We got three. What else? By the way, Ted Alexandro's joke, how all the... The uh, horrible, uh, what do you call those? Like, traumatic. What are those called? God damn it! When like a hurricane or oh, earthquake, mud, hurricane mudslide, mud all the natural disasters. Natural disasters. It's like the menu at TGI Fridays unleashing its wrath on the universe. That's a great That's joke. A great joke. Great joke. Love Ted. They're all drinks: hurricane, mudslide, and uh, the other one you said. Love Ted. Mm-hmm. So, uh, all right, that's, yeah, okay. so we and got then, three. What else? Uh, I'm blanking on a lot of them, but I'll throw Fruit Loops in there. Love Fruit Loops. Love a Fruit it's Loop. It's a classic. Classic. And, and Golden I'm a, Grams? Ah. Crackling Oat Brand. Ugh. That's, that's my number one, baby. What? That's I grandpa fuck, food. It's good grandpa food. Oat? Oat Graham? What? Cracklin uh, Oat Brand. Matt, oh, am I brand. crazy? You guys not do this? Anything with brand, I'm out. Oh, it's sugary, though. It's really good. Oh, okay, okay. Cracklin' Oat Brand's my fuck. That's a game changer right there. I've never even O'Brand. heard of Cracklin' Oat Brand. You better. We're having it one of these episodes. It's Jeez, delightful. That sounds like soul food. Crack. Yeah. When I was growing up, uh, there was Cracklin's. <laughs> what you're supposed to do with the Cracklin' Oat Brand is you take the spoon and you light a, a flame <laughs> underneath it. <laughs> but uh, no, I like that. I think life is underrated. If we're going, life is okay. It's life okay. is okay. It's not in the top it's five, but I want to give it an honorable mention. All right, I'll give it a mench. I don't like the name Life. I think it's too dark. Life sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, might you as should well try the it. other cereal, Hospice. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, right. Life support. <laughs> what else? Ooh. Oh, Captain Crunch is killer. It is good. I'll tell you. I, it, it does fuck up the top of your mouth. It though. does get a little chunky up there. But Captain Crunch peanut butter. Woo! And if we're really going full black tar. Yeah. Reese's Pieces came out with a cereal, and it was bananas. Peanut butter puffs. Peanut butter puffs. Best cereal on the planet. That's my number one. I'm changing. Damn. All right. So that I'm thinking what else? Frosted oh. Mini Wheats? How do you feel about I that? I love Frosted Mini Wheats. Eh. I like how they get a little gooey at the end. Me I too. I do enjoy that. You I'm, know? I'm, I'm 100% with you. 
I just saw a guy, there's a guy on TikTok. I forgot his name. He's a black guy with an amazing voice and mm. he just ranks food. John oh. Legend. <laughs> <laughs> um, he ranks food and he's so, they're funny as hell. And he does cereal and he shits on uh, Frosted oh, yes. Mini Wheats. And I, I got to go against him on that one. I love... Oh, really? If you know that guy's name, put it in the comments because he's so funny. He's on TikTok. He's got a huge following. He just does, he just ranks food. Oh, okay. Oh, you know what ain't bad either? Oh, there they are. There's the Reese's, is uh, Smacks. Eh. Also, Smacks? For, first of all, they now look we're, like. Now we're talking drugs here. Well, I know. They look like little twats, <laughs> they look like little vaginas, but they're also. Uh... I like to rub one against my nose. <laughs> I like to rub them against my dick. But, <laughs> but yeah, they look like tiny clams and uh, they taste pretty good. But yeah, that guy looks like a dealer, though. Look at him. <laughs> he does. He's got that the hat. Frog. He's just like, he's like, all right, quick, pay me quick. <laughs> Sugar smack. Pay me quick. Are we paying? Uh, we forget, you know, we forgot. I'm sure we'll get shit for forgetting. Uh, Count Chocolate is pretty good. Oh, uh, yeah, that's old school. Boy, good, good call. Is Man. there anything else we forgot? I don't, I didn't Funny like the cookie quiz. Honey bunch of oats is great. If we're gonna, but that's, that's not like the too. sugariest thing. But it's, it's got sugar in it. But they 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 play the whole we're a health food. Yeah, but yeah. it's not it's, healthy. It's the same it's deal healthy. as life. The same yes. thing. Like, yeah. life is better than that. I, I, in terms of like, I think it's healthier. But no, you know what they do? They, it's like the kind bar shit, where it's like covered in uh, caramel. Oh yeah. But they're like, this is a hell. I'm like, it's a fucking Snickers, dude. It's a Snickers with a cool wrapper. That's it. And it's called Kind. Kind. W wait a minute. What is that one that's got a funny name? Is it Honey Bunches of Oats? There's one where it's got a funny name and they say it in the commercial and everybody goes, ah. It's like a joke. Oh, God damn it. It's a funny name cereal. How do you feel on, we on Wheaties? Wheaties stinks. It's all right. It's just cardboard with milk. I guess cardboard's okay. I don't uh, mind it. I remember yeah. when getting on a Wheaties box was a big deal if you're an athlete. Like, he made, he got a Wheaties box. Of course, of course. Bruce Jenner. But I don't think if you put sh uh, fruit and sugar in a cereal, it's already out. I don't like when people put the, like, like Honey Nut Cheerios is good on its own. Yeah, but you it's gotta, overrated. You gotta Frosted put a, Flakes is overrated, too. Frosted Flakes sucks. That's just sugar and cardboard. Yeah, yeah, just there you go. Just give me the cardboard. I need sugar on cardboard. Kicks sucks, too. Fuck you, Kicks. Kicks rocks. <laughs> Kicks, yeah, K I X too. They thought they'd been really hip. Yeah, yeah. It, it was okay. It wasn't horrible, but it was. You know, you were never excited, right? Cheerios is solid. Ah, I mean, you gotta put a, you gotta put a strawberry in it, or it's boring. That's that to me. That means you suck. You know what's interesting? It's like Apple Jacks. Suck. Apple Jacks was something a little yeah, too yeah. appley for me. There was one with a funny name. It's gonna kill me. <laughs> All right, honeycomb. No, Those no, sucked. no sucked. It's weird when uh, it's you know what's fun about the cereals though is like you see they try to do the different brands and stuff. Yeah, but the it's like cocktails. The classic survive. Yes, you know like Negroni, Manhattan, right? But then they French Toast Crunch. Who fucks with that? I tried it. I had a I had a bender on that. I'm not gonna lie to Was you. It good. Yeah, it's pretty good. I went to Vegas and blacked out and had it, but. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's okay. It's, it's probably it's, the most innocent Vegas blackout story ever. <laughs> I woke up with milk all over me, an <laughs> empty bowl, empty spoon. But yeah, yeah, dead hooker. But yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> oh, tricks suck. Cocoa Pebbles is solid. Only because you get that chocolate milk at the end. Yeah, that chocolate milk was a bonus for oh, sure. Oh yeah, tricks. tricks. Tricks wasn't bad. Silly rabbit. Tricks are for kids. Why? I That was the Why worst, worst marketing of all time. Yeah. What'd you say? The best milk was from the Reese's. Oh cereal. yeah, great you milk. Had, you had great peanut milk. butter milk at the. It's incredible. Why did they ever make? They made like strawberry chocolate milk. They made you know obviously chocolate. They made vanilla. Where's the peanut butter chocolate? You're very right. Nest quick. Listen up. That's gold. Peanut, peanut butter, butter milk? milk. I just had a shake the other. I'm a big milkshake queef, and yeah. I had a peanut butter milkshake, and it was dynamite. Is that your go-to? Well, I like chocolate peanut butter mix, but they don't always have it. Sometimes you get a little banana in there. It's kind of ah. nice. Peanut butter and banana is nice. I get that in my smoothie, yeah, right. which is basically a milkshake. Should we make uh, peanut butter uh, boozy milkshakes? Oh, don't tease me. Now we're now it's two vices. Now you're hitting sugar and alcohol. There's nothing Go like skin. a blender in a podcast studio. So. <laughs> yeah, right? This I'm, is dangerous. I'll try it. Don't you just want to get to theater level comedy where we just don't hear a mixer in the back? Oh, yeah. That's all I want. A blender. Those are the best when you're doing like a small show. You know, you're coming up, 12 people in the crowd. You hear, rrr, rrr, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I, I would know. kill to hear a laugh over that room. Story of my life. Or how about this one? You're doing like a, a good set. You're rolling. And you hear, ping. 
like oh some motherfucker got an email you know i hate that there's or always the, something or the just the phone ringing the phone and then no one knows who it is everybody's doing this shit oh yeah, god we in sorry. boca raton i thought i was in a fucking real city here come on yeah yeah I had a weird one this weekend. I was in West Palm Beach. Oh, jeez. That club's pretty it's pretty nice though. It's beautiful club, yeah. but here's the here's the clinker. They're short staffed. Every club so is. So every show is starting like an hour late. I'm like, what are we doing here? They're like, we got eight servers. It's five uh, five hundred seater. I'm like, oh yeah, good. So the four thirty started at five thirty. Yeah. West yeah. Palm. Oh no. yeah. A lot of a lot of geriatrics. You but, got a you had a hip crowd there though. They're they're uh, No, they were cool. And that little shopping center is pretty cool. Yeah. And I, I hate the shit on Florida. I love Florida, yada, yada. But you got to be tight and you got to be bold in there. If you got any kind of like smart, subtle shit that's out, yeah. you got to just bang them over the head with something, <laughs> which is it's it's horrible. But and it's an exor- exercise and it's a lot of work, but it's good to like see where your act is at um, banger wise. You know, you're like, that's a banger, that's a banger, that ain't a, I thought that was, that ain't one. So it's interesting for that. Like, Leno used to say he would follow Pryor at the store back in the day, and he said, I thought I had an hour, I had 20. Wow. Because you couldn't fuck around after Pryor because they just saw him. Interesting. Yeah, sometimes, though, I guess it depends, because we've all followed, like, Rock or Chappelle. Sure. Seller and, uh... Sometimes they just see the famous person and they're like, vacation is made. And they're like, all right, we'll give this other guy yeah, yeah. some energy because we're in a good mood now. Yes, yes, that's true. Phil Hanley still has the, the greatest line. What did he say? I mean, I'm building it up, but uh, it was like, this is five years ago. It was Louis, Rock, and maybe Chappelle. It was like some gigantic crazy list. And Phil goes up after, which is always terrifying, as a young, non-famous comedian. And he goes... Ah, uh, the big four. <laughs> <laughs> I think he said them like another one. I know. Oh something like yeah, that. something like He's that. Something like that. But yeah, it's perfect. But yeah, yeah. Phil's always great for his a killer zing. zinger. A zing. God yeah. Damn. So how was West Palm? It was good. I mean, I gotta tell you, like that's what's so cool about this. The United States of America is. I did a private gig in Nashville. Flew to Nashville the, the day of, did a great gig for a movie festival. They hired me, private gig, whatever, corporate, whatever you want to call it. Woke, went, went out with the whole team, got drunk, <laughs> fell asleep, woke up, took two flights connecting, got all the way to West Palm, and you're just in sunshine. I'm in a hotel. I'm overlooking the beach, the Atlantic Ocean, Pacific, Atlantic. Atlantic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Atlantic, and just like, oh, my God, it's the coolest thing about comedy it's just like those curtains open you're like wow this beautiful city it's like ferrari and maserati's going by and those cool roofs with the 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 orange uh what do you call those shields shillings shingles you know those or- that, that's, shingles. that's spanish is that style called? i think real? they're called shingles i know that's also a disease i don't know anything about cars so it could be anything no 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 i'm talking about the the houses oh the houses okay. you know that spanish style houses with like the the, uh, the, the Give me, give me a, it's like a white kind of, that's it, that's it, that one right there. Those shingles, like all the houses look like that. It was just beautiful. Yeah. And you're just like, wow, I'm in a whole nother world. Not to mention it's fucking Florida, which is the, you know, the bath salt of states. And uh, they're all just fucking wild and everybody's having a great time. And there's iguanas everywhere and Cubans and Jews and old people. Great time. Did you see this guy on uh, on TikTok who's just knocking on really expensive homes? And he's like, ah, you know, I just was admiring your home. How do you make your money? Oh, I had that exact idea. Did he really do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was like an idea I had, but I never did it. So good for him. <laughs> what, how does that go? I, that's great. Well, people are like, you know, I, uh, I did real estate. Or like, ah! Yeah, they, 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 they just tell him, but it's like. Oh, it's kind of ballsy. I know. I had that exact idea to just go up to people and go, how did you make your money? Like if they have a nice car and this guy did it. There's a guy who does that with cars as well. Oh, <laughs> damn it. See, so, I feel like they're scripted, though, because they're always like, you're that guy from TikTok, right? And oh, like, how do you know? Like, I know he has a lot of views, but how do you know? Like, interesting. Well, I, saw, I saw it in like a news story. I didn't see it on TikTok. I just saw it like a, an article. Even bigger. Made it to even the news. Bigger. Yeah, you know, uh, although not even bigger. He's getting way more views That's on TikTok. Good That's point. But, uh, yeah, it's, oh, by the way, I was in Philly all weekend. There's a guy, there's people wearing the comedy t-shirt that you sell. All right. Comedy. I'm going to start my own. I'm going to, I'm going to go after a joke. I'm going to go humor. 
<laughs> I'm going to start my own thing. Humor. That's great. <laughs> no one's taking humor. <laughs> That's great. Although anytime somebody refers to themselves as humorous, you're like, Ugh. you're the opposite of funny. I know. You, you wrote a cartoon for the New Yorker in 1993. <laughs> you're humorous. A humorist. Yeah, humorist. Oof. That is the opposite of... Uh, that's like saying, uh, is that lady pretty? She's interesting. <laughs> yeah, humorist is like, uh, it's like pretentious but not funny. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, let me get that last queef out of there. Mm. Sip it up, buddy. I'm on a little muscle relaxer action, so I'm going to try to stick to one. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, humor, I like that. What? Uh, give me a peeve. Well, we were talking earlier. I got a couple peeves if we really want to sink our teeth in, but... Yeah. We were talking earlier, like obviously Norm passing all this shit with the goat, the goat. I'll post a photo up here, like you're the goat, you're the goat. There's no goat. Enough with the goat. You're killing that term. I mean, it's like it's like we gave gold medals out to 18 different people. You know, it's a gold medal. It's one guy gets it or one gal. No, enough with the goat. Yeah, it's like you're killing that term like it's a goat in Mexico. Yeah, you're killing it. Yeah. Stop killing it. Uh, I'm with you. It's like goat for everyone. It's like goat is greatest of all time. You don't use that for everything. It's, yeah. It comes watered down. Completely. And I think that's kind of just how things are going where you have to reach for the – Louis had that bit where he's like, he's a genius. Like, no, no, genius is this insane level of intelligence that's very rare. And you're like, you brought a cup to the barbecue. You're a genius. Or right. or that's hilarious, you know. And he's like, no, it's not hilarious. You fucked the guy's wife. <laughs> It's funny, but well, it's like um, it's humorous. It's like Tom Brady. Everyone's like, he's the goat, and you're like, yeah, he's the goat. But you can't use that on other quarterbacks That's it. now. It's he's over. The goat. It's over. Exactly. I'm with you. I'm 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 over goat. Goat. Enough with the goat. How about uh, how about uh, how about P P got pretty good all time. Pretty good all time. P got P G A T. I know, but pretty good all time. Yeah, an all time pretty good. Oh, okay, 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 yeah, Something yeah. like that, or like, you know. Every now and then, he's, he's solid. <laughs> e e n t s n e n t h s. all right, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, I like that. People just became obsessed with it. I walked by a bar in Philly called Goat. Uh, Everything's fucking goat now. It's funny, because the, the goat is getting no love. It's just that term. Goats are still like, I'm getting fucked. I'm out here trying to, farmers are fucking me in the ass. I'm just trying to eat some eat some grass. Sometimes I'm eating a burger. I'm like, this cow is the goat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all very confusing. Goat cheese isn't bad. It's all right. It's all right. It's overrated. It's overrated. It's overrated. Like if, you, like if you get an omelet and they're like, it's spinach and goat cheese, you, you really want cheddar in there. Let's you really that. do. Yeah, yeah. Get out of here with the goat cheese. That's another another overrated. That could be a segment, overrated. Overrated. I like it. We Might Be Drunk is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's standing in the way of achieving your goals? A lot. Yeah. Figure it out with BetterHelp. Uh you know, look, I've I'm in therapy. It's been very, very big for me. I I love it. Uh, he's he's definitely helped. Oh yeah, I just I, talked to him. Yeah, yeah, great guy, great therapist. BetterHelp is therapy for the 21st uh, century. BetterHelp is professional therapy, all online. It's all remote. Do it from the comfort and privacy of your own home. Flexible schedule, phone or video calls at your convenience. Get a good match. They will put you with a licensed therapist who is right for you. That's the most important part of therapy. You need someone to feel like you can talk to them, who gets you. It's fast. When you sign up, you can start talking to your therapist in less than 48 hours. No waiting around. It's affordable. You didn't have to be rich to pay for this. It's uh, And financial aid's available. This is great. Mm. And now you can send messages to your therapist anytime. Paul, what about Bob? Bill Murray. Great movie. Great movie. They'll get back to you in between sessions. Don't like your person. If you want to switch therapists, you can do it anytime for free. Trust me, it helps to have someone outside your world to talk to. It's easy to schedule, affordable, and will take a load of off your shoulders. Over, hundred, over a million people have taken charge of their mental health. Join them. Tell them how to do it, Mark. Uh, BetterHelp has a special offer for our listeners. Visit BetterHelp.com slash drunk for 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash drunk for 10% off your first month. BetterHelp.com slash drunk. Sign up for BetterHelp to start living a happier life today. Just try it, folks. You don't like it? Don't keep going. Nate Bergazzi, Jerry <laughs> Seinfeld. You're both kooks. Get some therapy, you chooch. What else you got? 
We're brought to you by Sheath Woo! Underwear. Sheath, I'm wearing it right now, I think. Hell yeah. Uh, let me see. Nice. Sheath. That's it. That's it. Hold on. Up. Oh, I'm wearing women's panties. Forget it. Don't keep keep going. We love Sheath. Sheath is the best. Keeps your balls off your leg. Two pouches, one for your dick and one for your balls. Keep the ammo separate from the gun. Supportive. Sexy looking. My girlfriend, it's her favorite underwear. Ooh. Mine. How much I love mine, it's crazy. I love it. it love it. it. I wear them constantly. It's a, you, you have your underwear that you look forward to wearing. Yes. And then you have the others you're like, Swiss cheese undies. My balls are going to dip in the toilet. Yes, I'm getting good old. Mark. Uh, shout out to that classic Geraldo bit <laughs> when his balls <laughs> dipped in the toilet. Oh, yeah. The idea for Sheath came from its founder, U.S. Army soldier Robert Patton during his second tour in Iraq. This is an American hero, guys. Hell, yeah. Support this awesome veteran-owned company whose founder is a big, big comedy fan. Tell him how to do it, Mark. Yes, I love Sheath. I love Robert. Get on there. Go to sheathunderwear.com and order with promo code DRUNK to get 20% off your first order and Sheath Underwear's 100% money back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com. Promo code DRUNK. Get sheath underwear and let them support your balls. Woo! Uh, how about this one? This is a peeve that happened to me this weekend. You ever have the guy, and I'll try to act it out. You ever have the guy do this? Do you mind if I have a sip of this? And he already took it? He already took it! The guy who does the thing and then asks if it's all right. I'm guessing this happened in Nashville or Florida. Florida. I feel like people aren't doing this shit in New York. Maybe not. You know, the guy who's like getting like a glass out of your cupboard. He's like, do you mind if I use a glass? You're like, well, you already took it out, Dickless. Like, you got to ask before you take it out. <laughs> you're, you're, oh, Dickless is like your new insult. Oh, you're, sorry. You're going, I like it. I'm trying to clean it up. Dickless is good. Yeah, dude, I'm with you. I don't like people grabbing your shit. I feel like it's slowed down a little just with COVID. Like, people uh, are not as bad, but like, yeah, no, I'm fucking, I, that annoys me. I hate when they're doing it and they're in the act of it and they ask if it's all right. Somebody will throw a blanket over their shoulder, like, can I use your blanket? You're like, you're already, you already took it. Well, this one's about your girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> you said blanket. That doesn't make it right. <laughs> well, I, you know, yeah, I don't like it because you know why I don't like it because it's it's just who that person is. So right. if, like, if they're like the type that would just take a sip of your thing without asking, then they're doing a ton of other inconsiderate shit. Yes, yes. And then they cover their ass by going, is this okay? Like, to be polite. But I don't like a politeness if it's just a... It's just like a, a filler. You, you don't mean it. You were polite after the thing. It's not polite. It's not polite. You, polite you is out. You just forgot. Yeah, it's literally like cutting someone off in traffic and being like, oh, do you mind? Hey, do you mind? That's exactly what it is. We had a drunk driver on the road driving back last night. Oh, and it yeah? was like fucking scary. He was like swerving. We oh, like, yeah. Like, That's, thank God I was with Gary Veter, who's like Ten and two. nervous Jew behind the wheel. Yeah. He's like, yeah. <laughs> He's like I'm going to stay behind him. I felt we were like in French Connection for a second. I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> I've been on a few rides with Vitor, and he gets angry. He's he got road rage. He's got the baby seat in the back, and he's like, I'm going to follow this guy. You're like, fuck <laughs> this guy. Forget about it. He swerves in front, goes to his window, pulls the guy out, starts fucking wailing on him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a Vitor story. Tell me if I've told this, because it's a doozy. I love Vitor. One time, me and him did a gig in, like, I don't know, Midtown, and we had to do another. We were both on a show at Eastville on 4th Street, so we're going up Midtown to Downtown. We get in this Uber. I mean, we get in a cab, a yellow cab. This is seven, eight years ago. The cab was like $22. Veter is doing the credit card. Boop, 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 boop. Accidentally tried to tip the guy 10 bucks. Tipped him 100 100. bucks. Yeah. Have I told you this? No, no, no. But that's, I just, it's happened. It's And so the cabbie's like, he's like, oh shit, can you reset it? I I accidentally gave you $100 on like an $18 ride. And the guy was like, I don't know how to do it. Da, da, da. And the guy and Vita was like, "Well, I'm not giving you a hundred dollars as a tip." And he's like, "I do That's how. That's the machine." And he was clearly full of shit, and he just wanted that money. But Vita's like, "Okay, well, I'm gonna sit in this cab until you reset it or give me my money." And I'm like, "Dude, I'm on in like two minutes. We're already at the club." And he's like, "You can go in." And I'm like. Ah, I don't want to leave my friend here, but uh, so I went in, did the set. Came back and sat back in the cab with Vita, and they're just sitting in there like this, like a Mexican standoff. Wow. Or a sit off. And eventually the guy was like, he's losing all these fares because he could have been on driving. It's been like, you know, 45 minutes now. So eventually the guy was like, all right, all right. And he reset it. Wow. And I was like, man, Vita, what a badass. 
And that is the origin of Israel and Palestine right there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, perfect. Woo, baby. Love it. All right. It still tastes good, but it's not alcohol. Um, yeah, dude. God damn. Vigo- props to Vitor. Vitor, I mean, he's four foot one. He's bald. He's got glasses. But that guy will take a stand. He's in good shape, too. He's kind Great of Great shape. He's kind of ripped. When I met Vito, he was a boozy pothead, and now he's like a dad in great shape, and uh, just, he's got like an SUV, he's got a house in Jersey, he's really come together. I love his joke about how his, his wife caught him uh, checking out another woman. She goes, I, I don't care, Gary, just don't be so obvious about it. So now I uh, sit in the bushes with binoculars wearing care of camouflage. <laughs> great joke. He's got some of the best... Classic one-liners. How many guys or gals are doing hardcore one-liner setup punch big laugh jokes? It's pretty rare. It's rare. He's old school. It's like an old school comedy style. Look up Vitor Las Vegas. Yes. Wherever you get your comedy albums. Uh, great Spotify, album. Spotify, iTunes, uh, whatever. Check it out. He's great. Banger after banger. I opened for that album. We had a we had a wild week in Vegas, but uh, yeah, killer, killer out. And Liz produced it. Damn. Yeah. So good. Shout out to Liz, comedy seller. You, she's been getting a lot of love yeah. uh, from my <laughs> doc, full capacity. Movie. You know, the, the New York Times guy, Jason Zinneman, wrote, Liz steals the whole thing. Ah, Amazing. That's so great. Funny. That's yeah, great. Made, made me smile. I sent it to her. And uh, yeah, love it. I'm getting messages about the movie, so I can't imagine what you're getting. People are liking it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Full capacity on YouTube, baby. Shout out to Salacuse, uh, mm. Eric Scott, Marlon Kraft for the music. Mm-hmm. Uh your, your buddy, the drum guy, too, has been killing it. Oh, is he in it? He he does the drum soundtrack. What? Incredible. Good for him. That guy's great. He loves comedy. He's great. And who else? I mean, I just want to leave anyone out here, but... Full capacity on YouTube. It's already over 100K, and it's just going to keep on rising. It's a great time capsule for, uh, you know, New York City in this weird, kooky time George we're living ha- in. Harmon, Ryan DeVere, uh, Jason Cash did some additional editing as well. Uh, shout out to everyone for, yeah. for that. Josh Harmon. Uh, well, you got you got a peeve? Did we do a peeve? For I you? got a peeve. It's Please. when people just tell you that they're tired. Ha ha ha! Guess I got what? A we're all that. tired. It's exactly. New York. You're either tired from work, you're tired from the energy, you're tired because you have kids, or you know you just got laid off. You're unemployed. You're tired because you're looking for work. Yep. You're yep. Uh, you're homeless. You're tired. Yeah. Because you're homeless. We're all fucking tired. Totally. I'm I'm 100. And everybody uses that's like a go to excuse. It's like get out of here. Push through. I want to meet the guy who's like I'm tired, but I I don't care. Well, I still got shit to do. We're all tired. Get out of here. How often do you meet a guy in New York who's like full of energy? Never. <laughs> you never meet that guy. Never. That's a great point. Because if you have any. It zapped you of it. You've, you're done. Yeah, yeah. We're all tired. Nobody cares. You telling me you're tired doesn't help the situation at all. So what's the point? Yeah. I, I get it. It sucks. We've all been tired, but you're here, so you got to do the job. I'm sorry. Yeah. Tired. Good Good one. <laughs> we're always tired. That, that's such a... I, and I, I, I... This is a pet peeve. Now we're, now we're getting into a, a, a butthole here. That's my new term for a rabbit hole, because yeah. I don't even know what a rabbit hole is, so I'm saying a butthole. It's a hole for rabbits. Uh, I don't know any rabbits. I don't know any rabbit holes, but I know buttholes. All right. All right. <laughs> so I was gotten in this big butthole with somebody, and uh, I forgot my point, because I'm all excited about buttholes. I think you can go deeper in a rabbit hole than a butthole. I think that's where uh, it's coming from. You don't know my friends. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, either way, I don't want any hair. All right. You get it? Hair? Okay. Um, fuck. What was my point? Uh, butthole, rabbit hole. What did you say? Oh, uh, I, that I'm tired. Those tired. People. But you had to say, nobody says we're full of energy. Oh, I got it back. So we're, I don't know, what are you, 35? Yeah. Yeah. All right. 35, mid 30s. I'm 38. All these guys who go, and gals who go, uh, well, I'll tell you nowadays, uh, you know, I go home at 8, and I uh, watch TV, I put on pajamas, and I take it easy. Like, they're bragging about how boring their life is. That's a big thing now. Like, I'm not even talking about COVID, pre-COVID. Oh, yeah, you know, me and the lady, we call it a night at 7.30 now. We're sitting in bed reading. I don't even want to go out. It's like, shut up, you dork. Get out there. Come on, live. We're young. We're still young. We're youthful. 40 is the new 10. Yeah, no, I'm with you. people that are like really proud. 
They're so proud. I napped four hours today. How cool am I? Like, like you're a fucking loser. You nap four hours? Get out of here. I can't nap. I can't nap either. I don't nap. I coffee up too much to nap. Yeah, yeah. And I just lay there like childhood, you know, thoughts. Uh, this guy hates me. You know, I can't nap. I panic about a lot. Oh, yeah. We're, we're both neurotic, just thinking, stewing. Na- to me, a nap is a nightmare. It's not like I can just, these people just fall asleep like, oh. I'm they, so jealous of those people. Oh, you ever on a life. flight and the person next to you just like conks out and you're like, must be nice. Must be nice. Then you wake up the plane land. You're like, ah, oh, four hour nap in. Plane's done. I never had to worry about the flight at all. I mean, Jesus, you guys don't know what you have. Oh, when the, when the plane hits terrible turbulence and the guy next to you is asleep and you're like, oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> you just missed the whole event. Isn't that crazy? We're contemplating death. This could be it. Here it gets going down. And then some motherfucker slept through the Sully flight. I guarantee you. <laughs> How about that guy? You know, just he's like. Got, he's got Whoa. dreams. Just dreaming about rabbits. It's going down a hole. <laughs> yeah. And Peaceful. He wakes, he wakes up on the Hudson Bay like, what happened? What'd I miss? <laughs> oh, great. We're on an inner tube. What a life. Yeah. What? If you think of uh, any other, any wrecks this week? Mm. I got, my wrecks are getting weirder because I, uh, I want to branch out a little bit. Here's a life hack that someone taught me that I've never forgotten and it's great. We go to a lot of hotels. I don't know how relatable this will be. We're in a hotel every weekend. Every weekend you're in a hotel, there's an extra roll of toilet paper under the sink in the bathroom at the hotel. Take that extra roll, because you're not going to use a, a whole roll. Wait, wait, wait. Your, your wreck is to steal? Yes. I'm not stealing a what? towel. I'm not stealing a TV. <laughs> Take that extra roll. Just sitting there. The maid doesn't notice. She just goes, oh, we need a new roll in here. Next week, Mark is going to go, just go into a bank, wear a ski mask, <laughs> just say, give me your money. They're not using the money. Well, you take the roll, you just put it in your bag, you put it in your suitcase, you don't even think about it. Now you're at home. You get back home on Sunday or Monday, and you're like, man, we're low on toilet paper. Thank God. I, now you never have to buy another to- roll of toilet paper again because you've stolen one way weekly. I I mean, if it works for you. I'm t- I've done it for 10 years. It's never failed me. <laughs> Mark, you just, I think you're addicted to stealing. Though. Wow, this is pretty light if we're talking stealing. It's light. It's I'm just, not getting it's, the, the chair for this. No, nah, shit, maybe I'll do it. I'm just saying it's practical. They got the extra roll. It's like taking the soap. You wouldn't call that stealing, would you? Bad soap, though. It's not great soap, but I use it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we're all using the, the soap. I mean, I use it in the hotel, but it's not like... Uh, you know. I bring it back. <laughs> Look, I'm not going full Gilbert Gottfried or Howard Hughes here. I'm just saying there's an extra roll of Charmin. Throw it in the bag. Don't even think about it. Just I don't pick think it up. Charmin. Put it in. I think that's shitty toilet paper, too. Well, if you're in a decent hotel, they're not going to give you the uh, the sandpaper. I'll, I, the Scott toilet paper is terrible. It's not great. It's, it's not great. It's just fucking, you, you got you to gotta flip it over five <laughs> times. I mean, what is this? Well, what are you, what are you, shitting blood here? I don't no, know. No, but I, I just, you know, I want to make sure my finger's not making contact with my, uh, with my rabbit hole, so to speak. That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, it's a real briar patch down there. <laughs> but we got to get a bidet. That's what yeah. we're really saying here. Bidet is Seymour Ted. I know. Everybody's got a bidet but us. Bidet people, send us something, when will you? you? When are you going to pull the trigger? Uh, well, I'll eventually kill myself, but no. Um, <laughs> I was thinking I, about your high school reunion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I think uh, I think may want to hit my first mill. If I hit my first million, I'll get a bidet. How about that? All right. Let's yeah. make a pact. Uh, all right. All right. We bidet both pack. hit a mill. I'm going to go to your house one day on Thanksgiving. I'm going to see you ahead of a day, and I'm going to go, he made it. You could get one at seven fifty. I think. I think you're fine. They're not expensive, dude. Ah, it's got to be a grand. With all the money you're saving on toilet paper, that, that, <laughs> that should be the fun. That's not bad. That's not bad. Give me a bidet price. I'm talking a decent bidet. Don't a give good, me none of that A good that one, fucking... not one of those like $400 ones. Yeah, either. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm talking a real, nothing from like Afghanistan or anything. I can't imagine they're bidetting, by the way. It's uh, it's a different setting for women. In Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah, it just stabs them. <laughs> what? Um, okay, so that's my that's my wreck. Take the toilet paper 800? out of every hotel, but it's not relatable because not everyone's in a hotel every weekend. I think for most people, a hotel is a big deal. Yeah, I'm not a big. Uh, I mean, some of these hotels, I got to get a buyout at this point. Mm. Man. Do you feel that way too? Some of them. Yeah. Are, really. 
I've done it once or twice. I'm not a high maintenance guy, but uh, me neither. But some of them are just crappy, and you just are like, "Well, I'm here. This is quality of life. I'm on the road." Constantly. Totally. And then the ho- some hotels are like thirty minutes away from the club, and you're like, "What are you doing here?" Wait, well, what? Yeah, that's insane. That's insane. It's like my half my day is getting to the club. Then you get you have a few drinks. You got to get all the way back, and that's Ubers, and it sucks. Oh wow! They see these are not. I'm talking about the thing you can strap to the toilet. This is like a fucking. Yeah, we want to strap on. Mark's trying to get pegged after a shit. Here. <laughs> yeah, Let's... I want to get water pegged. <laughs> water pegged. That's a great name for a bidet. <laughs> yeah, water, water pegged. You, you get the freaks on board. You ever, uh, you ever do a water pick? What's a water pick? It's basically like a little machine that oh, shoots flossing? water. It's flaw. It's. I don't think it's as good as flossing. Though. They say it's better for you. I don't know if that's true. I don't know. I did a water pick for a while, and it really gets some some chunks of of poo out of there. Yeah, all that ass eating. I had a couple of corns and peanuts between the molars. <laughs> all right, <laughs> this episode jumped. This we've jumped the shark a while ago. On this one. How about? Uh, okay, I got a wreck for you. Uh, How much is that? Forty two dollars. Yeah, but that can't be a good. You need a good one. You that is a steal. <laughs> no, the toilet paper is a steal. <laughs> yeah, Charmin. This is is this forty two bucks can't be legit. That is low. You got one? Uh, I I know someone who has one who's like a, it's like a heated one too. Well, I don't need like all that. Heat is nice. Listen, dude. in the winter, you, once, you, <laughs> once you once you felt it, once you sat on a warm, like internally warm toilet seat. You won't forget it. All right. All you right. won't go back, dude. Yeah, it makes sense. It's like sense. stealing toilet paper. You're like, this is. <laughs> what do you? So you think the the heat the heat you recommend the heated bidet, and and how is the bidet? Did you feel clean afterwards? Yeah, it's nice. The only thing is that uh, who I think it was like Tom Segura or somebody who was talking about. He's like a he's like a no wiper. They they were talking about a Bert and Tom were talking about how they both have bidets. They've gotten addicted to them. Yeah. And but Tom is a no wiper. So like in wow. it, so like in Italy, like That's they don't ballsy. even have toilet paper rolls. They just have the bidet next to the toilet. Yeah, and then you just I don't know, you get up and you just walk away with like a wet ass. I don't understand. Yeah, that. I yeah. don't know how that works. So I still like I'll still like dry myself off. You know. Yeah, I mean my asshole it feels nice. is it looks like Sam's eyebrows. It's just covered <laughs> in hair. It's like a shag carpet down there. He has to tweeze the middle of his <laughs> asshole just to make sure it doesn't get any blockage going on. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you, need, you need a bidet with like laser technology to like clean that area yes as well. yes the non-wiping is, is a little ridiculous so, let me get so this is the I, i've never done the bidet i've never you, either you you wet the butt and then you do like one wipe so you so, still need some toilet paper so yeah there, there is so there is like a good amount of pressure to it so it'll like you know pierce power, power wash you out and then also they have like circulating ones we just do a whole little like hurricane in your butthole. But aren't you like, a drippy mess after that? That's what I'm saying. Like I like to just dry myself yeah, off. Yeah, give that's me a it. dry. Do they but have one that has a, well, a sound? Actually, of... there are other ones that have air, that are hot air. Ah, uh, you blows see. Now I'm in here for 20 you, minutes. Dries you off. All right. What are you saying? Oh no, no! I was just saying they should make one that has a voice with it as it's going up your ass. Is that you've been a very bad boy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's I don't want the uh, toilet actually. I don't want the air fryer too thing or the dryer, you know, the, yeah, what well, you got to do, you do that shit under there. I don't want that on my ass either. So much stuff to look into as an adult. It is better for the environment. It using is. Using less paper, 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 paper all day. I mean, years of toilet paper you've used. Yeah. Years. So, years. So of many. Thousands Think of how trees. how many trees have gone just for our ass. I know. No, see, that one's a grand, but that's a toilet. I'm talking about the the attachment. No, it's an integrated toy with attachment. Oh, uh-huh. it's the whole thing. Yeah, I don't want the whole thing. I already got a toy. I live in New York. My toilet's 900 years old. It's from the 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 18 whatever you know Tammany Hall shit on that thing. You ever th- you ever read those articles about like how rats will run up through your toilet? Oh, that's God. rough, right? I remember during the uh, flood in New York. You never seen those? If you're on like a low floor, oh, it could happen. So frightening. It's so frightening. You'll never... Not if, not if you're Richard Gere. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've heard. He's, I've like, heard. he's like, you're finally home. <laughs> <laughs> it will... It will. They will run out of your... There are articles about this in the Post. And it's like... I'll tell you. I, during the flood in New York, I heard like bubbling from my uh, toilet. And, and my girlfriend goes, what was that? And I was like, nothing. I swear to God, the rat was my first thought. I was like, not oh. that we're flooding. I'm like, a rat just came up my toilet. I'm going to have to explain this one. Terrifying. Apparently, Ugh. Chuck Berry, 
R.I.P. He got in trouble for putting a camera in a women's toilet. Oh wow! To look up, which is like, dude, I get it. We all like naked ladies, but uh, this is the view you want. You want the shitting and the perioding and the pissing? Like, what are you, crazy? Well, I don't understand. It was like a hidden camera thing? Hidden camera, and he for, got busted. For his TV show? Or? No, no. <laughs> That's a hell of a pitch. That does not fly on ABC. He's like, he's like, guys, I've got a sales pitch for you. <laughs> Yeah, that's the worst of Practical Jokers episode yet. <laughs> but no, he would just he had his own nightclub because he was a you wow, know rich oh, celebrity, yeah. and he put a camera in the the women's bathroom. Oh my god! And he got busted for it, but crazy. He went to jail, I think, for that. But well, it's just a weird. That's where you want to see like a, a dressing room. Okay, there are women taking their shirts off. This is not whatever. the right takeaway, Mark. Well, I'm just. I, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> really I understand spying on women in the shower, the but not in the toilet. I'm not approving. I'm just saying I understand it. But the toilet one, you're like, I don't even understand where your head's at. Maybe I mean some guys are into shitting stuff. Odell Beckham, whatever his name is. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it just that's crazy. There was like a Law and Order SVU about that, and you're like, this is what you're. In. I mean, that's like a dark, dark fetish right oh there. yeah isn't that the german shyster films or whatever they call it, where they shit on the chest and it's a it's a genre it's not at blockbuster genre is a grandiose term for the shitting <laughs> what's your favorite genre do you like foreign films i like pooping on the chest that's kind of my I thing mean, it's technically adventure you know? <laughs> and it's a foreign adventure but yeah that's a kyle Kinane joke He's like, uh, he's like, uh, what do you, you know, what were you watching? I was like, oh, I was catching up on some cinema. It was a foreign film, Russian teens, you know. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Che had that great joke. He's like, I like to watch action films, porno. I call them action films. I can't. I'm butchering it, but uh, yeah, yeah. There's the shit movies out there. That's all I'm saying. Should we do uh, bits? Yeah, yeah. What's a bit you're working on? All right, I got one. That uh, now these. By the way, I just got to give you a uh, honorable mention. Your tag you gave me, or whatever your premise or or help oh, the butthole thing. The butthole thing is like killing, and hey. I, I I'm bittersweet because I'm like thank you to my friend for giving me this great twist on the bit, and also damn, I wish wish I had thought of it. <laughs> you know that feeling, sure, yeah, yeah. So it just it just lights out. It's like a new banger in the bit in the act. Love, love having a new bit that's oh, coming. You know, I look at my act like trail mix, and the, you got an Eminem in there. Oh, thank yeah. you. So um, here's I got, one. I got, I got a lot of raisins in my new act. So <laughs> yeah, I got a few cashews. <laughs> um, so now this is a joke I thought of two days ago while in the shower, and I don't know if it's anything. I've never tried it on stage, never, never said this out loud. So this is raw. We got a new uh, football player, openly gay. Yeah. Whatever his name is. Quarterback, I think. White guy. I forgot his name. What is it? What's we name? need the name. But uh, he's openly gay, which is, I think, the first NFL openly gay. Michael Sam was openly gay. I think he but, had a pretty... but was he NFL? He was on the Rams for a minute, I think. Ooh, bad, t- uh, bad choice of names there. The Ram. <laughs> but, uh, all right. So, whatever the guy's name. Carl Nassib. Uh... So Maybe Michael Sam came out as gay before he was in the NFL. I think that was it. I think that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, cool. All right. So now I'm trying to think of some other gay football names, but I can't think of any. Uh, nah, I got nothing. All right. So the gay football player, he's openly gay, which to me is is great and good for him and all that. But it's impressive to me that he hid it for so long because he was a gay player for all these years and he had to tell everybody and come out. But I'm not even gay, and I've played football and got called gay the whole time. <laughs> you know, I've been called uh, every gay word in the book when I have my horrible throw. So, like, this guy is gay, actually gay and hid it well, from you want, football you players. you want to stay under the radar uh, with your sexuality in football, just be really good at it. Yes. No yes. one's gonna call you gay. No, there's no homophobia when you're fucking throwing touchdowns. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The the proof is in the uh, the anal. But like, <laughs> it's fascinating that he's so good at football that no one even thought he was gay. I'm so bad at football. Everyone thought I was gay, and I'm not. He is gay. So and then and then also the fun idea of this statistically, what is it? One in every ten men is gay. Like your old joke. Something. 
or one in every eight, whatever it is. So that means we've had ton of gay players over the years who just never came out. For sure. And also, uh, I mean, some come out after a time. It must be tough to to have that kind of scrutiny, you know, when you're when you're playing. I bet it's uh hmm. Also another angle of the bit is gay is one of the few groups, like oppressed groups, that can be hidden. Jew can kind of be hidden. Gay can be hidden very well. People, gay, people, gay Jew, very hidden. Very hidden. Yeah, that was a way in the closet. <laughs> but gay, you can hide. No one's ever like, no one no one ever said in the, in the 50s during segregation, like, I was black the whole time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, you can't hide black. <laughs> you, can hide, you can't hide, um, you know, Hispanic or Asian. You can hide gay. So that's something interesting there. Like you can't. No one. No one on the team was like. I, I had no idea that guy was uh, one of the Asian. only groups people are bigoted towards with a big uh, with a big reveal. Big reveal. Gender yeah. reveal. Yeah. yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. And it doesn't change anything. Like they're like, oh, he's a gay player. Whatever. Who cares? As long as he's making touchdowns, who cares? But no one in like in the forties in like the school segregation was like, ah, I tricked you. <laughs> I was black and I, I graduated. I was black. <laughs> ah, you know, there could be something there. Yeah, they're like, get him. They're like, shit, he is fast. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's a fun idea. Well, I'll, I'll noodle with it's it. Something but... about like how you can hide it. There's something interesting about how it's like it's the only group that you can kind of hide. Yeah. And then I, there's so many jokes about football being super gay. Like, they're in the shower. They're doing a huddle. They're right. hut, hut, hut. I'm like, that's all been touched. It's all been done. Been done. And I don't want to get into that world. But I feel like there's something with you can hide it. And I've been called gay. And I'm not even gay. And this guy is gay. And he hasn't been called gay. He had to come out. That's how good at football he is. I'm so bad at football. I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm straight. I have to prove to them I'm straight. You're fucking a woman. They're like, we still don't believe you. <laughs> yeah, we've seen your uh, your throw, <laughs> your spiral. So I don't know. that's uh, that's my idea. There's something there. There's yeah. something there. I'll play with it. Email me if you have any ideas. By the way, our fans are funny. I've gotten a few tags out of some people. Oh yeah, remember to email us at we might be drunk pod at gmail dot com to uh, join the Patreon, which is growing. Patreon.com slash we might be drunk pod. Yes. Um, let me tell you, I'm working on a couple. I don't know if I've run this on you back in the day, but I, I can't quite crack it. Part of it's hitting. Hit me, baby. But it's, I have a whole thing about canceled versus cancer. Mm, and it's kind of like canceled versus like canceled. You know, uh, I say with cancer, at least people are rooting for you to come back. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? No one's doing that when you're canceled. True. Get well soon. They don't, they do that for cancer. They don't do that for canceled. Right. But they should. You should get well soon. Right. Uh, canceled is almost like it's cancer that the people anoint you with. Yeah. You know, the people give you cancel. Life gives you cancer. Yeah. And it's like one of the lines that is hidden, I say, um, you know, there's stages for cancer. There's no stages for canceled. There should be, you know. Said something mm. messed up at an office party. Treatable. Fuck the <sighs> stepsister. Terminal. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Stepdaughter, I'll say. Stepdaughter's better, but you know what I mean. That's good. Yeah, it's treatable. Something. Yeah, yeah. And you can get, I guess some people have gotten out of it. You can get out of can't like he's a cancer survivor. He's a cancel survivor. Well, either way, you're kind of a survivor, right? Yeah, completely. If you get out of it. <laughs> but the thing with cancer is if you survive cancer, people are like, hell yeah. If you survive a cancer, people are like, good for you, but stay away from me or something like there's still a little bit of residual like i don't know about this guy we don't see anyone who's like going through chemo out at a restaurant like you've got a lot of nerve showing your face you know <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know but like yeah you almost would rather get cancer i wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> but maybe for the bit that'd be funny cancer's beatable you know but either way i mean either way if you're like they find old pictures like he had a cigarette from 1982. Yeah, something. yeah, right, right, yeah. You see a guy smoking, like, dude, you got to relax. You're going to get cancer. You see a guy, um, like, looking through child porn. You're like, dude, you got to relax. You're going to get canceled. You know, like, there's <laughs> symptoms. There's there's ways to get it. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if I'm looking at someone watching kiddie porn. I'm like, <laughs> well, you got to chill out, man. Bad example, bad example. <laughs> uh, bad example. But I think I think you're on to something. I, I love jokes like that. That's very, to me, to me that's very Carlin-y. You know, it's like. 
and you get to point out things in both. I think that's I think that's big. That's gotta, like a keep, big bit. You I can blow keep that out. That. I like that a lot. Oh, maybe that could be something with like there's the cancer ward. Wouldn't that be nice if it was a cancel ward? You know, it'd be the it'd be the funniest ward. You're yeah, like, hey, you, look, you, Louis here. And, yeah, Shane Gillis is over here. Yeah, <laughs> Spacey. Yeah, that's fun. The cancel ward. Oh yeah. But there should be different wards. Yes. So you get to the, you finally make it to the worst segment. You're like Cosby. Shit. <laughs> I'm not coming back from this one. Also, you got throat cancer, you got bowel cancer, you got brain cancer. There's different kind of cancel. There's I'm, fi- I'm porn. finger cancels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's there's uh, re- he said retard. He said uh, or he had caught child porn. He uh, you know fucked a 14 year old. Whatever it is. There's different. There's different versions. Yeah, there's stuff. I'll, I'll, there's stuff to play with here. I'll, I'll take this one on the road. I love it. Uh, I love come, it. There's a lot to play in, with. Uh, I'm in St. Louis, Indianapolis, Springfield, Missouri, Chicago, Denver, Phoenix, SF, New York coming up. A lot. A lot of fun stuff. Dallas. Uh, see me on the road. Buffalo. Samuel.com slash shows. Mark, where are you gonna be? Wait, is SF back? Are we are we allowed there? Yeah. Oh, great. All right. We got to do some of these, by the way. Oh shoot. Yeah. Let me let me do the these before we. Do uh, plugs first. I'll do the plugs. All right. I'm all over the road. I'm in Nashville this weekend. Zanies. We're adding shows. I love Zanies. I love Lucy. I love that town. Let's uh, let's get kooky. Then we're in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Also adding shows. Love that club. Great I've done club. two albums there. Love, Love those it. Greek ladies. Rochester, New York. Hometown of our producer, Matt Peters. I'm thinking about doing Dr. Grins. What do you think? It's, it's on the table. I'm putting the I'm putting the pressure on you. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's one of those like one weekend fell through. They're like, do you want to do Dr. Grins? And I'm like, ah! So <laughs> It's just your weekend. Yeah, it's my weekend. That'll be quick and painless. I like Michigan. Yeah, Michigan's uh, cool. Portland, Oregon, and it's Helium. Great. Rapids, you got that good madcap coffee. It is that. That is good coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always a goddamn wedding in that fucking building. I know. Laugh Boston uh, coming up. Brea Improv out to the West Coast. Vancouver, baby. Oh, BC. Damn. New Orleans. Uh, Royal Oak, Michigan again. Atlanta Buckhead Theater. And uh, that'll be it for the year. So let's let's get kooky. Let's say hello and let's uh, let's hug. And make sure leave us a nice review on the uh, on the iTunes thing. Right? Sure, do it or up. A podcast app, whatever you're doing. All right. Damn, I had something at the end and I forgot it. Either way, thanks for listening. Get on the Patreon. We just sent out a ton of signed postcards. There's tears. There's queers. There's fears. <laughs> Horrible band from the '80s. And uh, <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. Praise Allah. Keep it coming. Keep drinking. <laughs> <laughs>